Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Sagittarius which happens on Tuesday, June 14th with its peak time of 4.52 a.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. Now this is the first full moon in Sagittarius that we have that it's not an eclipse in like two years so for that um, but it is kind of a delicate one in my eyes with potential to be constructive regardless for release but let's just let's just get into it first aspect we're going to touch on is the sun in gemini and the moon in sagittarius both square neptune and pisces now with both luminaries square in the planet of illusion we have to make sure we're clear about the intentions and things that we're letting go of and we're trying to manifest this lunation and that we're not indulging in our own fantasy or that we're not grounding enough uh, or have an anchor to ground us um, to really make sure we are letting go of the proper things we need to grow and make space for new things. I feel like sometimes Neptune can bring confusion to the table, especially when it's dealing with a square aspect, which is more of an aspect of friction and tension versus a trine or a sextile, which is more supportive and harmonious aspect, um, which to me indicates more creativity than delusion, which this is what is indicating to me. So just be weary of the things that you really want to cut ties with and let go of and try to find a grounded approach uh, to kind of gauge what these things you want to let go of are. Next up we do have Sun and Gemini, Trine, Saturn who is retrograde and Aquarius and I think this can help us with the previous aspect of the square to Neptune where Thankfully, with Saturn, we can really take inventory, rethink, revisit some foundational structures when it comes to who we are at our core, um, you know, what needs to be revisited, what boundaries do we need to work on, especially with Saturn retrograde, the retrograde period, it's all about revisiting and restructuring and rethinking. So what boundaries are working for you, what boundaries are draining you, what needs to be kind of adjusted, and I mean... It's definitely also we can make space and let go of foundations that kind of are really flawed and are not going to be sustainable in the long run. Next up, we do have Mars and Chiron conjunct in Aries. And um, like anything with Chiron, it can be somewhat of a vulnerable energy and really uh, can really sting a little bit. Um, but I feel like with Mars in such a strong position of Aries, it can be really helpful through healing. It can be really dedicated, strong, and have a strong mindset of like really getting the work done, really getting the inner work done, um, and cutting through whatever needs to be dealt with. It might be probably maybe in a more aggressive way that we're not used to, but the intentions there are good of wanting to like really get started in this healing journey. Lastly, we do have Venus and Uranus conjunct in Taurus. And as with anything Uranus, expect the unexpected. Uh, Venus is in its home sign of Taurus here. So maybe they're, these are like good surprises or unpredictable energies that come into play that are fun, you know, help you explore yourself, really um, rethink your values or up in new ideas of things that you hadn't thought about um, that you really enjoy and are pleasurable. Uh, what I will say is be careful with money. Anything with Venus and dealing with an unexpected planet, and especially in a conjunction, which is such like um, conjoining energies, I would just say just don't go crazy and keep an eye on it. Next up, I'm gonna pull a card for you guys. As always, this is meant to be either a message, an energy we need to lean into, or something we can have um, just on our minds overall during this. Sagittarius moon. We have Sagittarius first of all. <laughs> Which I mean, Dad, this is the full moon in Sagittarius, but maybe it's asking us to lean into that more exploratory energy, um, into being more flexible with ourselves and really exploring um what it is that we want in life. I feel like Sagittarius 
It's a very like free flowing energy. I like to think of Sagittarius fire sign, obviously mutable. So it's like an endless fire. It's like one of those fires that you can't really control and it'll just like want to go everywhere, expand everywhere. Um, obviously in a good way, right? Not, um, well, you have extremes with every sign, but in this, um, in this case, it's just like step outside of the box. Maybe, um, maybe that's something that you can explore with this full moon. A new way of releasing that's going to make you feel like, oh, like a huge weight is out of your shoulders, not just like a tiny thing that you release. It's like a big release is Jupiter energy. Also, um, remember that. And Jupiter is in Aries as well. So maybe this is like a huge emotional uh, release. Next up, we do have Lilith. <clears throat> um, and Lilith has be been coming up for me a lot lately because I don't really work with her. All I know is she's in Capricorn for me and I don't really know what that means. So um, maybe I'll take this as my sign to dive into it. But we'll just read from the little book. It's known as the shadow. Its symbols are owls, crescent moons, uh, snakes, wands, and cats. Um, and then it has some keywords, shadows, darkness, power, equality, mystery, wild, and pettiness. Let's see, when we start to stand up for ourselves, we are often faced with backlash and further punishment. Lilith asks that you that we don't back down, continue to push forward. In fact, you have the capacity to downright destroy those who continue to oppress you. Call upon this powerful figure of womanhood when you feel like you don't have enough strength left. Sometimes strength is just walking away from the people you are told you from the people you are told you are supposed to love or the goals and expectations others have set for us. Um, so I think, yeah, it's very much like do your own thing. Um, walk to the beat of your own drum, per se. Okay, so for crystals to recommend, I'm going to recommend Rhodochrosite this time around. I think we need something super caring, healing, nurturing, um, especially with the Mars Chiron conjunction and then Venus in uh, play with Uranus. We don't know what's going to happen. Venus is also relationships, money, beauty, pleasure, fun, love, all of that stuff. So um, I think we need something, uh, a little grounding, a little healing, a little nurturing. And I think Rhodochrosite can do that. Um, it's also a very healing stone, very good for the heart chakra. So yeah, that's what I'm going to recommend. For events to recommend, make sure to check out the description box down below for all of our events happening during this full moon in Sag. Okay, you guys, that is it for today. I hope everybody had a great weekend. You're taking care of yourselves. Um, lots, lots, lots of self-care, lots of release. Do what feels good to you and yeah thank you for being here i'm sending everybody much much love many many blessings and have a very happy full moon in sagittarius mm -hmm.